Hi everyone, this is Linda from Remade with Love. I'm here from the Midwest and I'd love to know where you're from. So please tell me where you're from in the chat box and um, tell me how long you've been using Amy Hauer products or if you're new to them. I, I love this creative community and I welcome anyone who's new, but also want to recognize those people who've been using Amy's products for uh, a while now. So let me know about that. Today, I'm going to be taking this sweet little table. You can see it's uh, seen, you can see it's seen better days, um, but it is a cute little table that I have between a number of rocking chairs up here at the lake house. And we use it to put drinks on, uh, maybe your book that you're reading while you're sitting here. I am totally going to refresh this. And I think you'll like what I do using just a few of Amy Howard's products. The first step in this transformation is to thoroughly clean with clean slate. This will remove the years of dirt and oil buildup from this sweet little table. And after it air dries, the table will be able to bond with Amy Howard's one step paint. I don't have to sand. I don't have to use a primer as her one step chalk paint is formula formulated to adhere to surfaces once it's cleaned thoroughly with clean slate. Next, I'll apply two thin coats of Amy Howard's Robin's Egg Blue One Step Paint. This is a smooth and creamy medium weight paint with the most amazing vanilla scent. If you've never used it before, you're in for a treat. This is a true chalk paint with no VOCs or added chemicals but there is a light, delicious vanilla scent to it. I'm using Amy's one and a half inch nylon angled brush, and I'll cut in around the joinery before using long strokes to apply the paint all over. I'm also going to start from the bottom and from the inside so that I can continue to paint the exterior as it dries underneath and on the interior. At this point, as the paint dries, I'm now ready to change up the table's look by creating decorative pieces I'll incorporate onto the finish. I'll do this using Amy Howard's Acrylic Glacier Resin and Hardener along with a fondant mold. Oh, you'll need to be sure you're wearing thin protective gloves, work in a well-ventilated room, have silicone or plastic cups and stir sticks, I like silicone because dried resin pops right off, and make sure that your table is protected with either a silicone mat or parchment paper. And have a flat plastic scraper on hand as well. Starting with Amy's Acrylic Glacier Resin, Part A, you're going to pour about a third of a cup into your um, silicone cup, followed by about a third of a cup of hardener, which is Part B. Now, if you just ended there, a third and a third, so equal parts, you'd get a hard as nails, tough as nails piece of resin that won't be able to bend. But because I'm going to apply this to the legs of my little table and they're going to, the lily of the valley are going to wrap around the table legs, I want my resin to be pliable. So after pouring the resin that's thick and syrupy, and then the hardener, which is much thinner and pours much more quickly in equal amounts, a third of a cup and a third of a cup together. I'm going to then add 
another 10% more of the resin. This will allow your pieces to be flexible for about 24 hours after they come out of the mold. So you'll have plenty of time to put them on your piece if you're going to wrap around a mirror or the edge of a table leg or something like that, like I'm doing, and then also have it harden once it's attached. So here I am adding about 10% more. And now we've got about a 20 minute working window after that uh, we stir these a good three minutes. So you need to stir about three minutes to make sure it's completely mixed together. And you can see that as I stir, the mix becomes um, a little bit cloudy white. The more vigorously you stir, the more white it will be. And a lot of this is the bubbles that are forming inside. So you either need to stir slowly and with a bigger spoon, this was a tiny little stir stick, um, or have a hair dryer or a heat gun on low setting handing so that as you pour it in or when you pour it into the molds, the air bubbles will pop with the heat and they won't stay and dry that way. So once your three minutes of stirring is up, it's time to pour the mix into Amy's silicone mold to dry. I've chosen Amy's Lily of the Valley fondant mold. I knew the moment I saw this mold that it would work perfectly on the little table that I had. Lilies are so delicate and dainty and they reminded me of fairy tales and enchanted forests and I could picture this being perfect. This little table with the little little lilies on it being perfect for a nursery or someplace where there's lots of little kids. My silicone cup is making it easy for me to to direct my pour. I can pinch the edges of it together and have this little pouring lip and it will easily fill each area. As we mix this together, some of it's going to overflow. Not all of it's overflowing and all one thing, but there. Um, and that's why I predict that you'll find that some should come next um, or a sprig will. It's just going to be much, much easier to take that mold and once it's inlaid in there, wipe it all together. You'll notice that after a few minutes, as your mixture settles, and um, even as you're pouring, some of the uh, liquid may overflow. Just use your plastic scraper to gently move it off and away from your mold. Drying time for this is going to be about 10 to 14 hours. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this overnight. My next step will be to apply the molds to each table leg. Wow, look how great these look. And in the morning, you can see how easily they're removable from the fondant mold. As I pull up, I pull from one side, then the other, and look how flexible. Oh, there's a little burr on the end here. Um, that's some overflow that I didn't get removed. So easy to take off in the morning with just a snip of the scissors, because remember I added more resin instead of hardener. And 
made a more flexible mold. So right now, these pieces are going to be flexible for about 24 hours. So my goal is to try and cover the extended external screws on this. What was my uncle thinking? So by making these flexible, I can bend it and glue these pieces over the screws and around the legs. To me, this gives added interest. So I gently mold it into place, see if there's any edges that I need to take off. And <clears throat> I like using Gorilla Glue because I want a quick and a permanent bond. Um, make sure to get 100% coverage when you glue, and you could use wood glue and other glues, um, but because this is so curved, a curved surface that I'm putting it on, I want to have as quick a bond as possible, so I'm using my glue, uh, Gorilla Glue with, for wood. So make sure to get 100% coverage on the flat side, um, the side that will bond to the table. Once you have a light coverage, then you're ready to secure it to the leg. So for me, I do a lot of eyeballing. I, I kind of know this will look good at this angle. I've done a pre-test on where I wanted to place it. So there's that pesky little first screw. And with just a bit of coaxing, I'm going to place it there and hold it and bend that little leaf around the corner. And then the bells will go up and around that top edge. Now I don't want this to move at all since the glue is on there. And once you get the glue on, on your one step, you don't want to smear it. You don't want any peeking out, which is why I wanted uh, a really thin coat. If you do, you can try a little um, alcohol on a cotton ball and try and, and rub that off before it sets in but really you try, try and get it as cleanly uh, on there as possible. And I didn't want any clamps um, because they would potentially mar my flexible mold. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and secure my fondant molds with cotton rope. For the small flower molds that cover the top visible screws, you know, that other pesky th screw that shows up, I'm using a Phillips followed by a flathead screwdriver to carve out a notch. This is going to allow a nearly flush finish and unnoticeable screw head. And I'll stick that right on. Once the glue has set, I'm ready to paint. So using the same Robin's Egg one-step paint, I'm going to cover all of my resin designs, my resin molds. I don't want any translucent piece peeking out. I wanted the decorative molds to look as seamless as possible. Uh, a small artist brush will help me cover all of the cracks and all of the crevices. And I could leave it this way, but I want a little something more. It's giving me a nice base. And it's only one coat. This will stick, one step will stick really well to the resin. So um, I'm going to mix equal parts Robin's Egg Blue to English Boxwood one step. And next I'll create that custom green for the Lily of the Valley greenery. I'll apply in an almost dry brush technique. By applying the paint lightly on top, some of the blue is going to peek through, making a del delicate variegated leaf coloring. I can always graduate this, change the color up, but 
I just thought this added to the delicacy and um, just little gentle um, fairyland look of it, keeping it a light green. Then each tiny flower bell on the Lily of the Valley is going to get a coating of Bella's Blush. That's another one-step paint. It's a soft, almost luminescent color. After I final, um, finalize doing the bells, and then I make a few final touch-ups, um, boy, an artist brush could be really helpful at this time. Um, I'm going to take my finger into glazed over and just give each little bell a dollop of glaze. This kind of makes that even more luminescent and, and gives a little sparkle. Whereas for the rest of the um, table, I can go ahead and cover with matte sealer. I don't really need to except on the top and the middle um, shelf where people put drinks and things like that, books and drinks. It may get scuffed and marred. So I want to protect that paint. But One Step does have a sealer mixed in with it. So what do you think? Here's the table, all finished and ready to go. I think it will look great in a nursery or our sunroom or even the second bedroom where it will be welcoming in new generations in our family cabin. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you would like to see more of my um, videos and follow me online, I'm at Remade with Love on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram or follow me through Linktree at Remade with Love. See you next time on the Amy Howard channel.